Let's say you're navigating through a dense forest, following what you thought was a well-marked trail, and then suddenly you realize you're completely lost. The path behind you has disappeared into a tangle of undergrowth. What lies ahead is an impenetrable wall of thorns and fallen trees. It's in this moment you face a fundamental choice that will determine not just your immediate fate, but potentially reshape how your brain responds to future challenges. You could sit down, overwhelmed by the situation, and wait for a rescue team that may never come. This is the path of passive acceptance, a mental state that while sometimes necessary for healing, can become a prison when it becomes your default response to adversity. Or you could survey your surroundings, assess your resources, and begin methodically creating a new path forward. This choice represents something far more profound than problem solving. It is the act of neuroplasticity in motion. Think of it as remodeling your brain's response patterns for greater resilience. Rather than accepting defeat, being proactive fosters a sense of agency and control, reminding us that even in the face of adversity, we have the power to shape our own outcomes. This principle isn't just philosophical wisdom, it's a fundamental truth about how our brains function and adapt. Every time we choose action over resignation, we're engaging in a biological process that strengthens neural pathways associated with resilience, problem solving, and emotional regulation. When we exercise agency, the capacity to act independently and make choices, our brains undergo measurable changes. The prefrontal cortex, our brain's executive center, becomes more active and better connected to other regions involved in decision-making and emotional regulation. Now, this isn't correlation, it's causation. Studies using neuroimaging technology have shown that individuals who regularly practice proactive behaviors develop thicker gray matter in areas associated with cognitive flexibility and stress resilience. The anterior cingulate cortex, a region crucial for conflict monitoring and decision-making, becomes more efficient when we consistently choose active responses over passive ones. Meanwhile, the amygdala, our brain's alarm system, becomes less reactive to perceived threats. This neurobiological transformation means that what once triggered overwhelming stress responses gradually become manageable challenges that we can address with clarity and purpose. Consider the difference between two people facing job loss. Person A might spiral into despair, spending days ruminating about what went wrong, feeling victimized by circumstances beyond their control. And then person B, while initially experiencing the same shock and disappointment, quickly shifts into planning mode, updating their resume, reaching out to networks, considering new career directions, perhaps even viewing this as an opportunity for growth they wouldn't have pursued otherwise. The fascinating aspect of neuroplasticity is that person A isn't doomed to their initial response pattern. The brain remains malleable throughout our lives. It's capable of forming new neural networks that support more adaptive responses. However, this requires conscious effort and repeated practice. Each time we choose a proactive response over a passive one, we're literally carving new pathways in our neural landscape. When we take proactive action, our brains release a cocktail of neurochemicals that reinforce this behavior. The reward chemical, dopamine, 
floods our system, not just when we achieve our goals, but when we take steps toward them. This creates a positive feedback loop. Action leads to dopamine release, which motivates further action, which strengthens the neural pathways associated with agency and control. Proactive behavior reduces cortisol levels, the stress hormone that can impair memory, suppress immune function, and contribute to anxiety and depression when chronically elevated. Regular exercise of agency creates a biochemical environment that supports mental clarity, emotional stability, and physical health. This isn't about toxic positivity or denying real challenges. It's about understanding how our brains are designed to thrive when we engage actively with our environment. The neurotransmitter serotonin also plays a crucial role in this process. It's often associated with mood regulation. Serotonin levels increase when we feel a sense of control over our circumstances. So this creates an upward spiral, feeling more in control leads to higher serotonin levels, which then improves your mood, your decision-making capacity, which enables more effective action, and that further enhances our sense of control. A significant discovery in psychology by Martin Seligman on learnt helplessness, which shows us that when animals or humans are repeatedly exposed to negative events they cannot control, they often develop a generalized sense of powerlessness that persists even when control becomes possible. Now this isn't a character flaw, it's a protective mechanism that can become maladaptive when it prevents us from recognizing opportunities for agency. The neuroplasticity research shows us that learned helplessness creates distinct patterns in the brain, weakened connections between the prefrontal cortex and other regions, hyperactive stress response systems and diminished activity in areas associated with motivation and reward processing. Now these patterns can be reversed through what researchers term learned optimism or learned agency. And this process begins with small manageable challenges where success is likely. Each successful experience of control and positive outcomes strengthens the neural networks associated with self-efficacy. A person recovering from depression might start by committing to making their bed each morning. This simple act of choosing order over chaos, completion over abandonment, begins to rebuild the neural architecture of agency. So as these pathways strengthen, individuals will become capable of taking on larger challenges. The key insight from neuroplasticity research is that the brain doesn't distinguish between the size of the challenge when it comes to reinforcing agency pathways. Successfully completing a small task creates similar neurobiological changes to achieving a major goal, though the magnitude may differ. If you start consistently choosing proactive responses, the effects extend far beyond the immediate situation. Our brains develop what researchers call cognitive flexibility. This is the ability to adapt our thinking and behavior to new changing or unexpected events. This mental agility becomes a foundational skill that enhances every aspect of our lives. So if you consider how proactive thinking affects our relationships, when conflicts arise, individuals with well-developed agency networks in their brains are more likely to focus on solutions rather than blame. They'll communicate their needs clearly rather than withdrawing in resentment. And they'll take responsibility for their part in problems while working collaboratively toward the solution. These behaviors repeated over time literally reshape both 
their own brain and their partner's brain through the process of co-regulation. Our ability to influence each other's nervous systems through our interactions. So in professional settings, the neuroplasticity of agency manifests as leadership potential, innovation capacity, and resilience under pressure. Leaders who have developed strong neural networks for proactive thinking tend to see opportunities where others see only obstacles. They approach setbacks as data points rather than judgments, and they maintain what researchers call psychological safety, the belief that they can handle whatever challenges arise. The mind-body connection in agency extends beyond neurotransmitters to encompass our entire physiology. When we exercise control over our circumstances, our autonomic nervous system shifts toward parasympathetic dominance, also known as the rest and digest state. This optimizes healing, digestion, immune function, and cellular repair. This physiological shift supports not just mental health, but physical vitality. Research has shown that individuals with a strong sense of personal agency have lower rates of cardiovascular disease, stronger immune systems, and better sleep quality. Their bodies literally function more efficiently because their nervous systems aren't constantly prepared for threats they cannot control. This creates another positive feedback loop. Better physical health supports clearer thinking and more energy for proactive behavior. This further enhances both mental and physical well-being. The breathing patterns associated with proactive thinking also contribute to this physiological shift. The breathing patterns associated with proactive thinking also contribute to this physiological shift. When we're planning, problem solving or taking action our breathing naturally our breathing naturally becomes deeper and more rhythmic this activates the vagus nerve which connects the brain to major organs and plays a crucial role in the relaxation response simple awareness of this connection can enhance our ability to shift into proactive states by consciously adjusting our breathing patterns a very powerful application of understanding agency and neuroplasticity is learning to reframe adversity itself. Traditional thinking often views challenges as things that happen to us, external forces that disrupt our plans and cause suffering. However, neuroscience reveals that adversity can be reframed as raw material for growth, opportunities, and to strengthen our neural networks for resilience and adaptability. This doesn't mean adopting a Pollyanna attitude that denies real pain or difficulty. It just means that developing what researchers call post-traumatic growth. This is, ability, this is the ability to emerge from challenges with enhanced capabilities, deeper relationships, a greater appreciation for life and stronger spiritual or philosophical foundations. Brain imaging studies show that individuals who experience post-traumatic growth develop enhanced connectivity between regions involved in meaning making, emotional processing and executive function. The key aspect here is how we direct our attention during and after difficult experiences. When we focus exclusively on what we've lost or what went wrong, we reinforce neural pathways associated with rumination and victimization. Now, when we also attend to what we're learning, how we're growing and what actions we can take moving forward, we build pathways for resilience and wisdom Understanding the neuroscience of agency transforms how we approach daily challenges and long-term goals. 
Every moment presents opportunities to strengthen our neural networks for proactive thinking and behavior. The commute that's unexpectedly delayed becomes a chance to practice patience and creative problem solving rather than a source of helpless frustration. The difficult conversation we've been avoiding becomes an opportunity to build courage and communication skills rather than a threat to be endured. The practice of agency begins with attention, noticing when we're slipping into passive or victim-based thinking patterns and just gently redirecting that toward what actions we can take. So this isn't about forcing positivity or denying real constraints, but about consistently asking ourselves, what's within control here? What's within my control here? And how can I respond in a way that moves me toward my values and goals? Small daily practices compound over time to create significant neurological changes. The practice of gratitude, for instance, isn't just about feeling better in the moment, it's training the brain to notice resources, opportunities, and positive possibilities that support proactive thinking. Regular physical exercise doesn't just improve fitness, it literally grows new brain cells and enhances the connections between regions involved in self-regulation and decision-making. The most profound aspect of developing personal agency through neuroplasticity is its impact on others. When we consistently model proactive solution-focused thinking, we create what researchers call emotional contagion. The tendency for emotions and behaviors to spread through social networks, our calm, Purposeful responses to challenges can literally help regulate other people's nervous systems. This creates more resilient families, teams, and communities. This collective dimension of agency challenges us to think beyond personal benefit to social responsibility. As we develop our own capacity for proactive thinking and behavior, We become resources for others who are struggling with feelings of helplessness or overwhelm. Our lived example of what's possible becomes a beacon of hope and a practical demonstration of how neuroplasticity can transform lives. The quote that anchors this exploration reminds us that even in the face of adversity, We have the power to shape our own outcomes. This power isn't mystical or motivational. It's biological. It's written into the very structure of our brains and activated every time we choose response over reaction, action over resignation, growth over stagnation. Understanding this gives us both the knowledge and the motivation to consistently choose the path that rewires our brains for resilience, creativity, and joy. In the forest of life's challenges, we are never truly lost as long as we remember that we have the power to create new paths. Each step we take in the direction of agency and control doesn't just solve the immediate problem. It builds the neural infrastructure for a lifetime of resilient, proactive living. This is the practical magic of neuroplasticity, the ability to literally reshape our brains and our lives through conscious, consistent choice.